how much worse can it get? Hey, Francine. Um, thank you for having me. Uh, well, we've we've laid out three scenarios for uh, for the crisis, and I think uh, in, in, it's uh, in commodity land. It's a little easier than if you start thinking about the political uh, ramifications of what's going on. But in commodity land, we have basically three options: either commodity flows revert to what they used to be, something along the lines of where we were six months ago, or commodity flows get meaningfully redirected from uh, Russia to China or other countries and away from Europe and the US. And the third scenario is that we end up with major deficits and surpluses emerging in different parts of the world with Russia being blocked off global markets. So so flows go back to the same, we get rerouting or we get major dislocations. Yeah. And, and I think right now we are in between two and three in most commodities. Um, so, so it can get worse. It can definitely can get worse. In the case of oil, uh, we believe the market is pricing in scenario number uh, number two, essentially a scenario where most of the oil that gets blocked off from the U.S. or the U.K. will find its way somewhere else. Um, but uh, but I think we could end up in number three if if uh, Europe yeah. uh, decides to join the U.S. and the U.K. Mm -hmm. for instance. And then in natural gas, I think we are definitely closer to number three because. Um, it is very apparent you cannot really reroute uh, Russian gas to China in a, in a meaningful way. Uh, Europe takes 75% of Russian gas. Yeah, Yeah, Go and ahead. I mean, look, it's, it's a beautifully written note because it's so simple, but it also makes for hard reading because the good, the bad, the ugly. I mean, the ugly is really ugly. When you look at right. what we're focusing on right now is the supply chain, so things coming in and out, whether also Russia, you know, when they say we'll stop certain exports of materials, we don't have the details, we don't, have, we don't know how deep that will go. If the focus then goes on to a recession, what does it mean for demand destruction? Does it automatically stabilize prices? Um, well, not, not necessarily. And demand destruction is, is never a, a price stabilizing event. Um, it, it definitely caps prices. But uh, for example, 2008, we saw a fair bit of demand destruction. Um, so, so a spike in prices doesn't necessarily stabilize, in, stabilize them. It just uh, it just hurts consumption, hurts the economy, and I think that's why Europe has been more more uh, very careful about not uh, restricting Russian energy flows because of the potential consequences that it can have in the economy. And and I, I realize this is a, a big moral debate going on right now, but at the same time. Um, the, the risk is that we end up disrupting our industries, disrupting uh, our, 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 you know, our, our travel to work and uh, mm -hmm. just our, our, our daily lives in, in a very, very meaningful way. Because remember, Russia does supply over a third of European oil and, um, and diesel yeah. inventories are very low. In fact, inventories for all, all commodities are low, but in particular, inventories yeah. for oil have come down uh, well below the 10-year average. And that's true for crude oil, for, for gasoline, for jet fuel, and it's true across the US, Europe, and Asia. So uh, we are at a crucial point. We're at a crucial point that could mean that we go back to using some of the dirty fossil fuels, including coal, coal, Francisco, or does it mean we actually accelerate the transition to green? So I think in the short run, uh, Francine, it's, uh, as I said, there, there's these three scenarios. And um, unfortunately, we're going to probably have to rely more on some thermal fuels. Uh, you mentioned coal, but coal prices have also gone a little crazy in the last couple of days. We've seen them cross $400 a ton. Uh, that in dollars per barrel, for those of that are not accustomed to coal prices, are roughly $100 of oil equivalent. I mean, that's a very expensive coal price when you just have oil at $125, $130. So, um, uh, historically, coal has been a 10, 15, 20, 25 dollar barrel equivalent commodity. Um, so, so coal is extremely expensive. We could go back to it. We could go back to oil. Uh, we'll see substitution. We've been seeing substitution, in fact, for the last six months. But I think the longer term, uh, Francine, we are definitely going to see an acceleration into the energy transition. Yeah. Now, in the short run, you mentioned nickel earlier. Nickel is critical for batteries, so that may slow us down for the next uh, year or two. But I, I, I think the, the the three five year view to me is a lot clearer than the than the three three-month view. Three-month view, there's a range of options. But in, in five years, we will see an acceleration of the energy transition. Because remember, Francine, yeah. um, energy security is like oxygen, you know? Um, in fact, yeah. security is like oxygen. And energy security is part of that. Um, you only miss it when you, when you don't have it. Um, People tell me, what's the plan B if we don't get Russian gas? I, I don't know what's the plan B yeah. uh, to, to keep things running. Uh, that, that's the reality. 